and then force you to play Mario Party with them, so you just have a terrible, terrible rest of your day. Uh, nobody's happy. Uh, you know, if, the worst would be if you had to do that and everybody was really mad and frustrated and you had to, like, stay on the bus for a long bus ride to somewhere. Like, maybe they're going to Busan or something. Oh, God, yeah, that would be terrible. Well, here's Flash. We've talked about it already before. Look at his stats. Just look at those and remind yourself why this guy is so popular, so famous. And uh, he has not dropped a single map versus Zerg. And there's a good reason for that. He's very good. He's very solid. His mech play is, is impactful. We didn't see that in game one uh, where he played against Solar. But I would really like to see it uh, in, in both of these games. I hope we get to see it all five games today. Sulky doesn't. He wants to end him here. Sulky wants to take out Flash. Of course, if Sulky does win, then Flash will be knocked out, and that is the last remaining player for turn. So Team Z, Team Zerg, would then get the win. Sulky, like you said, does want to get this win. Both of these guys kind of win their games, kind of looking unimpressed, and like, oh, okay, yeah, I won. Whatever. Like, <laughs> That's true. Uh, They've been pretty, pretty relaxed about it. Not a lot of trash talk. Yeah, I think when parting plays a little bit later on tonight, though, we may, we may see that change. Wow, he's so handsome. He's like, I wanna, I wanna be with Flash. Uh, he's so handsome. Like, <laughs> I mean, Flash is known to have so many uh, fangirls and just fans in general from Brew War and now. And we have some of them here at the studio. Yeah, we do. A lot of them, in fact. And I think everybody's happy that Flash was the one that able to survive. Um, it's very handsome. As, as the sign of, you know, is evident. Or it was evident in the sign. <laughs> oh, that was really good as well. <laughs> as the sign was evident. As the sign was evident. <laughs> Wolf, like, reorder your words, man. <laughs> Get yourself together. <laughs> All right, these two players, of course, on rivaling teams as well. Flash's team, uh, Team Zest, was able to defeat SK Telecom uh, with uh, with an all kill just last week. So yep. we didn't get to see him play. You can call it Team Zest after that uh, four in a row against that team. That was really amazing out of Zest. I can't wait to see him in round two. Hope he comes out very soon. And of course, Sulky. So many people are calling him one of the best Zergs we have here. Yeah. And uh, he's going to be playing again. Certainly is. And uh, he's got a little smile on his face. Flash, uh, Flash keeping the water in the mouth. We'll do that. <laughs> Just keeping uh, his Picari sweat, I guess, he's doing it with. He always chugs those Picari sweat. He drinks he them so fast. He's man. just. He gets like three in the booth at one time. All right, it looks like we're finally ready to go to the King Sejong Station. Flash versus Sulky. Find out if Flash can bring us to game five. Up here in the top left, the Red Terran representing Team Terran. He's from KT Rolster. It's Flash. Man, to the bottom right for Team Z, Team Zerg. It's Sulky. And these two guys were talking in the chat before the game. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't able to read it quite fast enough, but I saw some mentioning about Bio. Um, yeah. And also, I think one of the players was asking, you know, how would you like if I played? Basically, like, what do you want me to do? And uh, maybe they were talking about maybe playing Bio or Mech you know, for Flash. And let's let's see how Flash wants to play this. Uh, this map is the Hourglass natural map, two-player map. Pretty big, uh, you know, rush distance. It takes a while to cross the map. There's two entrances to the natural. One is blocked by uh, some destructible debris. So if you can kill those rocks, then you can actually uh, attack from two angles. Something we'll probably see later on if the game goes late. And it's uh, 
it's a good map for late game oriented strategies. It's not too tough to take a third or fourth base. So this guy came to watch Flash. Yeah. So many Flash fans here today. I swear, like all of these signs. You know? He came from Busan, actually. That's like really, really far. I don't actually know where that is. I was looking at that and I was like, it's if you take the KTX train, it's like like pretty close to Busan, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know what that means because like I don't know maps and stuff, but like it's like <laughs> it's like really far on the KTX line. Like it takes I think like I don't know maybe two hours or so. Don't quote me on that, but it's I know it's far. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> So he came along. It's long far, way. yeah. Whenever we have those signs that are like, I came just to see this from this far away, like, usually it's from a far location. That yeah. guy from Suwon, I'm like, ah, you know. That's pretty far, man. It's it, not takes, as, it takes me, like, basically as long as it takes me to come here to the studio from, you know, North Seoul <laughs> for this guy from Suwon to come on the train, I guess. To come you just, out. like, next time you put, they put you on camera, you should just hold up a sign. Hold up a like, sign. I'm like, I, I came from Shincheon. I came from Shincheon <laughs> to cast these games. <laughs> oh, we're so good. Um, I just hold up a sign and said, I came from lunch <laughs> really close by at a pizza restaurant. <laughs> it was good. I just had Domino's. Now I'm full. Well, we have... Uh, a quick command center here for Flash. Yeah, only one Reaper coming out on the map so far. He's yeah. going to come over here towards these rocks and jump up. Only one Reaper that gives him a lot uh, more gas to, to quickly go into uh, into factory. He says, I can't do that. I don't know why he's referring to the Reaper coming in, I guess. No, I think he's talking oh, about the, the Overlord, Overlord here. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to lose this Overlord to this one Marine. Flash, just laughing a bit. Looks like he's gonna get this. Yeah, yeah, he is. I I hope they chat about it a little more. <laughs> um, Reaper actually will escape as well. I don't know if he got any kills. Somebody click that Reaper. We need to know the truth. Um, six are only still alive. It looks unlikely that he got any kills. Yeah, and actually getting that Overlord is so annoying for Solki because now he has to make two at a time. He got supply blocks for a bit. His build is gonna be delayed by maybe 10, 15 seconds, which is. A lot of time in StarCraft. Yeah, and he doesn't have any more scout information about what his opponent's doing. So, a bit of a blunder to lose that Overlord. Very fast Hellions coming out here, faster than Sulky probably expects, um, because there was only one Reaper. He's probably starting to realize now, of course, because he hasn't seen uh, any additional Reapers coming towards his base. Reaper is lonely here at home. We'll have to defend against six Zerlings. He's waiting for speed, it looks like. He might just try to go... Hail Mary into the main base. I think that's what we're going to see. Finish, and he almost gets this around on the Reaper. It looks like he might go down. He needs to get the depot up. It doesn't come up. And now six Zerglings in the main. Yep, and he's not going to be able to get much more done with this. Maybe one more SCV. Not even, it looks like. The SCV's all teaming up. Bunch of bullies. Assistance arrest, man. I don't know why that started being called that. I think it's like a Warcraft 3 thing. But, uh... I think that's, that's the technical term for surrounding a, a unit with your workers and killing it. The super technical term. The super technical Pro term. Probably invented because it's, one caster said it once and then everybody started using it's it. It's probably on Liquipedia. Like, you can probably look it up. There's probably, like, a small amount of text about it, I, I would guess. So Citizen's Arrest. Like the Maynard? Yeah, the Maynard. And, uh... People don't usually say the Maynard anymore. They just say, you know, the transfer. Yeah, it's an older term. It's kind of falling out of, uh, you know, our, our new use uh, was out of contemporary commentating about StarCraft. Usually people say, you know, just transferring or, or sliding. Sliding? Sometimes people say they're sliding. For not, uh, not as often as they but still. Italians are going to poke a little bit on this, uh, on this Banshee, or on this, um, <laughs> this Queen. There's like no Banshee involved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And look at this, these Zerglings are coming over here, maybe to find some extra, and with the speed, he's going to try to get some surround. He's going to catch one unlucky Hellion, and he's coming for the rest of them around here, gets another one. And he can, does go down as well. Looks like eventually these Zerglings are going to be cleaned up, but not after, not until after three of those Hellions don't go down. Going to delay that harass a lot. Yeah, it's, it takes away some of his map presence. Uh, Worker-wise right now, 51 to 40, and Flash is... He's, you know, doing pretty well. He, he's not making any big blunders with his macro. He's also microing a decent amount. But losing those Hellions takes away a lot of the control for him. So 
We see him, of course, adding the, the 1 1 upgrades, powering up his barracks, getting that star port up as well so he can get medevacs out and start dropping. Very standard uh, bio play, which we're just seeing more and more of uh, in this race war specifically, but less and less of in, in televised matches. Yeah, it's so interesting. Just recently in Pro League in general, outside of the race wars, we saw so, ma so many you know mech builds, but now we're seeing four bio builds in a row. And I don't know if it's because of the race wars, you know, these guys just trying to do something new or just try to change up their play styles or not reveal anything maybe for the next round. I, I hopefully doubt it's about that. That would be very serious. But, uh, oh, look at this. Oh, does get the raise on the supply depots. Nice. But uh, regardless, we are seeing a lot of bio. Yeah, and I, I wonder too if it's just because they're trying to, to play different games. Um, okay, well he came from Yosu. These guys are just all over the place. Like, it's it's interesting for us for us actually from you know from America just as foreigners here in Korea um, to see you know we've been in Seoul basically most of the time we've lived in Seoul the right. whole time here, but to you know, actually think about the fact that Korea is a whole nation and these people come from all over Korea to watch these matches, even though they are in Seoul. Like, you got to think about that commute and uh, how it's actually a big trip for these guys to do it. It's not just like Korea and everything. It's like everybody lives in Seoul, yeah. which it can sometimes be uh, shown as. Right. Um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing that we have so many fans here so dedicated who will just come and watch an exhibition match. And I really like that. Scan reveals the Overlord a little bit longer, but he's, with Overlord speed, able to escape. Baneling speed, uh, by the way, is, is on the way here. 1-1 one, one nearing completion as well. Overlords are dropping like flies here for Sol. He's got to be very careful about that. Uh, we saw him already lost no, lose an Overlord in the early game. He's not very fond of his Overlords, perhaps. He does not take care of those Overlords. He only cares about his Zerglings. You know, the uh, upgrade window here is closing. Flash not going to get too much out of it because those Bane hits pushed him back, but he's still ahead in upgrades uh, as far as production-wise goes. Started his 2-2 already. Uh, gotta be careful here. You know, if he had a few more units on the low ground, might be able to get a little bit more done. And look at this, dropping all the way at that main base. It's so far from where this fourth base wants to go down, and it looks like he was trying to focus it down. He's going to move those Marines over there, but he doesn't get the focus. But he does a very nice split against all these Zerglings. He could clean it up. He could still get it. Ah, no, it looks like with the rest of these Zerglings, he may barely save it. Down to 50 hit points here. And it's going to be very low later on, though, so he may go back for a, a double drop or a snipe. These units are just kind of chilling over here next to those uh, debris. And again, uh, that upgrade lead for Flash may come into play here very soon. Not too long of a wait, though, for Sulky on getting his 2-2 uh, his up. He didn't wait very long. Now, for those of you guys who wonder why he drops the Marines on top of the Banelings like that, it's because it's never really efficient to trade one Baneling for a Marine. So if you can do that, you can just waste your opponent's gas, basically. Yeah, very nice attack. We do have Sulky over here defending with a ton of these Zerglings, basically. He's going to get a huge surround on a lot of those reinforcements out of Flash that wanted to come over here and try to finish off that. And these, this other little group of units out of Flash were trying to do some damage over there at those rocks, but they're still just kind of standing over there. Just uh, on vacation. Yeah, just uh, relaxing. Flash has, uh, I feel like, really overestimated his combat's damage potential in some of these fights. He's not splitting, he's just letting his Marines fight when they're surrounded. Uh, I think hoping that the Hellbats will win. In this case, uh, you know, again, he doesn't have enough here. He splits, and he's going to be pushed back yet again. Sulky is is trading very well here. No, that's that's the biggest point here. Sulky just continuously trading very well. All these trades have basically gone his way. He's been ready for everything. He's closing that upgrade gap as much as possible. Uh, it's going to be hard to get that hive up to try to get that three three. That is going to be something Flash is going to have in the future here. But you know, Sulky so far looking pretty decent here. He's building up that mute account as well. Flash is you know this continuous aggression that we've seen out of all of the turns today. Sometimes it bites them, sometimes it doesn't. And so far, Flash not being the most efficient. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the upgrades again, Flash has this the small window, uh, but he doesn't have enough army to actually make it work. He doesn't have enough to 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 go across the map and really do a big push. He's going to try to do this elevator tactic again on the side of the base. This time he's got a lot of units on the low ground though, so it's going to work out a lot better for him. Nice snipe there with the Mutalist. Picks, up, uh, picks off that medevac with all the units in it. Nice catch there. <laughs> the Thor making this a little bit more of a, a tough, you know, hard push that he's trying to make this, this work with. But. Did you see they actually put the uh, Overseer in first to get the shot out of the Thor so that the Mutalist could go in? 
Yeah. And uh, really nice taking gun. too much damage. The Thor fires so slowly, you know. Uh, yep. And he looks like he's gonna lose that Thor too. Help that hiding under there, maybe helping out, trying to help that Thor. Uh, if you have that many Zerg, there's a Thor eventually go down, but the Thor holds its own against against Zerg. Just really nice control here by Sulky. He's constantly targeting down Medivac. He's gonna get so much damage done here. There's not enough Flash. There's way too much Sulky. Flash is three three not done. The two two is done for Sulky, so they're even on upgrades. That Hive Tech uh, that you were talking about is is really important because he's gonna need those three three upgrades. Flash. The longer he's on 3-3 over Solky, the better he's going to trade. Um, Terran armies are already efficient as it is. And this Thor needs some more support. Oh, nice pickup there. Wow, very nice pickup. He did save that just at the last second. And look at this. The Stim is going to try to pick off as much as possible. Flash is getting the better end of this trade. Yep. S uh, scan, Stim, and Split. That's what we're seeing here. But it's just, again, not quite enough units. I mean, if you look at the army supply, it's always, you know, been pretty even because Flash just has such a great uh, economy on four bases, but how long is that going to last here? With Amulus now attacking that fourth base location, even Bainley's coming in. Nice micro here again by Flash, but he's losing so much here, and Sulky is starting to trade so well because he's not losing any Mutalus. Now he's just going to kill these Marines, and the SMBs are going to have to run away. He's going to lose some of those as well, and the attack does not stop. The attack, Sulky now getting the advantage of the snowball, and he's going to come over here. He wants to be careful. He's going to try to focus this down without losing any more of these Mutalus. Something you said about before is that he's just not losing these Mutalists, and it's such a big air force that he needs these Marines to deal with, but the splitting has been decent, but Sulky just has too much. Yeah, I mean, we've reached the tipping point, I feel, uh, in this game because Flash is just starting to lose way too much. Even with his 3-3 upgrades, uh, he's just not able to compete, and he, he cannot secure that fourth base, whereas Sulky is taking a fifth base right now. There's the GG, and uh, Team Zerg is able to take the 3-1 victory today. Wow. Very, very well played out of all these Zergs. And, you know, uh, well played out of the Terrans, but Sulky and, and Rora's play especially was, was very, very crisp, very solid. And, and I have a theory, I mean, I, I cannot say this with, with certainty at all, but it almost feels like they play Bio, like you were talking about before, just because it's a, a race match and they want to do something a little bit different, a little bit fun. Um, but they seem like their Bio was not well practiced, like a lot of miscontrol with Hellions, some some poor splitting, some overestimating of how much the Hellbats are going to help out in the fight, because we don't always see Hellbats even really mixing in this composition. The Widowmine got nerfed and everything kind of changed a little bit. Uh, definitely... Uh, not the best Terran versus Zerg, but really solid ZPTs, and, and that's why Team Zerg wins today. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I mean, the bio play wasn't terrible, but it wasn't as practiced as we've seen some of these guys play the mech, which really produces these long, awesome games that we've seen so far. And uh, like you said before, I think maybe they were just not as practiced with the bio. Um, but regardless, they tried their best. They're going to go down. They're going to be playing against Team Protoss next, the Terrans. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the Zergs are going to be able to take this victory and head home. Exactly. Uh, they will have to come back tomorrow, on the other hand. But, uh, yeah, I, I wonder if this is going to affect the minds of the Terrans. I don't think so, um, going into our Protoss match. But here are our results. Flash, the only player able to take one win. 